Welcome to another one of our HubSpot tutorials. This is CJ with The Gist. We're an inbound marketing and growth agency and certified HubSpot solutions partner based in Buffalo, New York. Let's dive in. This video is designed to show you how to filter contacts inside the HubSpot CRM and why that's valuable, right? It's not just about being able to segment them, but but under what conditions do you segment them? What meaningful actions can you take as a result? So I'm gonna navigate over to our contacts in the CRM by going to contacts and then contacts. Now inside you'll see all of these contacts that I recently imported. Um, I imported about 47 contacts that work at uh, three different companies, um, Dunder Mifflin Paper, um, City of Pawnee Parks Department, and Sterling Cooper. Um, so for any of you fans of The Office, Parks and Rec, or Mad Men, um, this should be a fun tutorial for you. So that being said, um, there's a lot of ways that you can um, filter contacts in here. So maybe the first thing I wanna do is just a general search. So I'll search for at uh, dundermifflin.com, right? So these are anybody who has at Dunder Mifflin. So you can see these are all, everyone we got, Kelly, Meredith, Jim, Holly, Creed, Todd, all the way down to Angela, Karen, and Daryl, right? Um, <clears throat> so this is a quick way to just search really simply. Maybe I wanna be like, oh, is Dwight in here? So I'll do Dwight and uh, there's Dwight, right? So that's just searching. But now we wanna talk about filtering, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click more filters and I'm going to say, um, you know, company name uh, contains exactly um, Dunder Mifflin. And I'm apply, right? So now these are anybody with Dunder Mifflin, right? So I'm going to click save view and I'm going to click save as new. And I'm going to say company equals Dunder Mifflin and hit save. So now, if I go to all views, here's a save filter. So anytime I wanna go in and see who works for Dunder Mifflin, boom, that's there, right? I'm gonna go back to all contacts here, right? And it'll save these in tabs, so you can quickly go from one view to another. Um, but now let's talk about something a little bit more practical, because usually you're not just looking to see who works for um, a particular company. Usually, you know, you're a sales rep or your customer service rep and you want to find some actionable information. Maybe you're a sales rep and you're looking for people to prospect, right? So maybe you have some company properties. In this instance, I've created two custom properties in this demo account. One is product or service interest designed to capture what particular products or services somebody might be interested in working um, uh, with my company for, as well as current CRM, right? A lot of, a lot of businesses, um, prospect, prioritize their prospect based on, you know, their current software package, not always a CRM, maybe it's a, a loan origination system, uh, or it's a, a medical billing software, or it's anything like that, right? So in my business in marketing, right, in my business in particular, we, we help a lot of people get the most out of their CRM. So it's good for us to know uh, what CRM that they're working with um, to begin with. So I'll go to uh, more filters, I'll clear this, I'll delete this condition. And I'll say CRM, say current CRM is known, right? Now I've only populated this for one person, Dwight, and I believe I put him at Salesforce. So instead what I'm gonna do is say current CRM is any of Salesforce. I'm gonna update this filter and I'm gonna save this view, save as new, and I'm gonna say CRM equals Salesforce. All right, so now again, you go to all filters, Company is Dunder Mifflin. You have all your Dunder Mifflin people. If you want to go to CRM and Salesforce, it's right there. So now maybe I have this ready to go so that anytime we have a product um, or a service that could be particularly attractive to people who are using the Salesforce CRM, I could jump right in here and I can uh, find those people. So it's really easy to uh, create a bunch of filters. Not only that, but you can also create filters around uh, behavioral data. So let's say CRM is Salesforce and um, uh, last page seen, um, or let's see, uh, time of last session, right, is this week. 
So not only could you like filter by certain criteria like product or service interest or other criteria you have associated with that contact, but now you can also say, all right, plus anybody who meets that and has also been on our website within the last week. And uh, with with larger CRMs with more contacts and with with companies who are who are um, really heavily invested in inbound marketing um, strategy, they're constantly producing lots of content. You're going to have lots of website visitors. So usually, um, I have a number of clients where when they put a filter like this, there there's always at least a, a, a dozen or two contacts that that meet the criteria that are ripe for follow up. And so um, this is where it really pays to. Um, uh, to continue to produce content and have these filters saved. And then when you do, this is where you can take some meaningful action. Because it's not just about being able to see a bunch of contacts on a list, but it's about what do you do as a result. All right, so now I go in here and uh, I can do a number of things. I can create a task for myself to follow up with Dwight. Um, I can enroll Dwight in a sequence. Um, I'll be creating a sequence in another video. I can add him to a list or enroll him in a workflow um, or take other actions. I can also easily preview this record. Um, I could jump in, right? And uh, I can actually email Dwight. If I just create an email here. Of course, I can do the same thing uh, from Gmail and it would still show up in their timeline. Um, <clears throat> so you do test, test. And I'm going to send this email. And now this email is going to come right into this timeline. And it's the same thing if I did it from my Gmail inbox or, or Outlook if you're using Outlook, because as you've seen in a different video tutorial, I've already integrated my email inbox with HubSpot. So now all of this is, is seamless and comes through right here. But the, the key thing to remember is the robust ability to filter your contacts, search for contacts, filter them, save filters, save them based on things that are um, things that are valuable to you and your sales team, and then be able to take meaningful actions as a result. So that is how contact filtering in HubSpot works. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you wanna dive deeper into this topic, suggest we do a new tutorial on a new topic, or if you wanna learn more about our HubSpot onboarding and support services, head on over to thegistcontent.com slash HubSpot. Thanks for watching.